My friends, dearly beloved, this is a call to all of humanity that I make today. It's a call to human beings of all colors and creeds of all nations. But in particular, it's a call to Africans at home and abroad to rush to the aid of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a great nation, one of the greatest nations on earth to have survived for 3,000 years, rooted in the Bible and the three wise men, one of whom was from Abyssinia, the historical name for Ethiopia. Today, Ethiopia is under attack. It has a very unkind media that has distorted the story of, the, of that nation and has opened floodgates of lies to undermine a legitimate government headed by Prime Minister Abe Ahmed. I do not know Prime Minister Abe Ahmed. I've never met him, I've never spoken to him, but I had the good fortune recently to go to Ethiopia. What was that mission? Well, I want to give thanks at this point in time to David Johannes, the cousin of Prince Umi Selassie Hai Selassie and his friends, Mesfin Makonin, Tabubu and others, who invited me to meet with Ethiopian coffee farmers a month ago in Addis Ababa. When I arrived, I met a friendly people, proud, majestic, a bustling city with skyscrapers and buildings and cranes engaged in the construction of a thriving African nation. My friends, today Ethiopia is in peril. It's in peril because major nations in this world, including those in the West that should know better, have given support, either directly or indirectly, to tribal forces that disregard the decision of the Ethiopian people to elect Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. The government of Ethiopia is recognized by the African Union, the United Nations, the United States, the United Kingdom, and all major countries. Why then do we see a constant effort aimed at denying the legitimacy of that government and elevating to some degree of parity the tribal forces arrayed against that government. I call on all Ethiopian brothers and sisters, do not drink the Kool-Aid of the tribalists. The tribalist in African history is a handmaiden of colonialism. I was born in a small British colony of Dominica, which like Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, and the other Caribbean islands, were peopled by people of African descent who were enslaved to grow the wealth of Western Europe Britain in this case, with the complicity of some tribal leaders who worked hand in glove with some of the colonialists to sell our people into slavery. Unfortunately, they did not recognize the importance of strategic unity of purpose. They did not recognize the fact, as Abraham Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So they allowed themselves to be consumed in exchange for a few trinkets and some rot got liquor by those who came bearing gifts to steal the fruit of Africa. And they gave way to their tribalist sentiments. What did that result in in Africa? 400 years of colonial rule and enslavement of our people at home and abroad. That, my friends, is what faces Ethiopia today. The destruction of a great state, a state that is at the cusp of great things, a state that just recently set up a space agency, planned to send a rocket to space within five years. A state that's built the, the biggest dam, arguably in Africa, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, that would revolutionize industry in that country by providing affordable electricity. A great many Ethiopians, the majority, I dare say, are without electricity. Without electricity, you are not, unable to engage in the information revolution. You're unable to power uh, the new uh, technologies of the 21st century. Those are the things that we as Africans in the diaspora, Africans in Africa, Ethiopians, humans, should focus on. Things that my father, Wendell Mackenzie Christian, who served in the British Army and who respected Emperor Selassie, called meaningful. Meaningful things. Today, tribalism is not meaningful. Today, to exalt that which is Oromo, or Tigray, or Hamara, or Afa, to atomize Ethiopia in little grouplets and statelets, little tribal fiefdoms, that is not helpful. 
Don't buy into that. Don't with your anger buy into that. Let us have peace in Ethiopia. Let all Ethiopians, Tigrayans, Oromo, all see their essential humanity and oneness working hand in hand with each other to grow greenhouses, working hand in hand with each other and their allies to bring in irrigation projects so we can allow for the desert in Tigray and other places to bloom and produce fruits and vegetables to feed the hungry multitude. Let us see partnerships between Ethiopia and historically black colleges and universities. So we can see exchanges where African American students and other students go, go to Ethiopia on projects aimed at the development and advancement of Ethiopia and Africa. That is what we want. We should not waste our time here in Washington, where I've lived most of my life and have meetings to overthrow a government. This is against U.S. law. It's a violation of U.S. law. Let us, when we're in Washington, instead understand our essential polarity, and that is one of humanity, one of empathy, one of unity of purpose, one of understanding. I grew up among Ethiopians. My first friend at college at the University of D.C. was an Ethiopian, Johannes. He was from, I think, Tigray. But to be frank with you, all these years, after having met Prince Selassie in 1993, I could not tell you by looking at an Ethiopian who is Tigrayan, who is Oromo, who is Amara. To me, they're all my Ethiopian brothers and sisters. So this is not about the TPLF and what it has done, because we know that it only has done what it has done because it was allowed to do what it has done. It was encouraged in what it has done. So we want peace in Mekele and Tigray. We want peace all over Ethiopia. We want peace all over Africa. We want peace so we can continue to build the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Have peace with our sister nation of Egypt. Have peace with Sudan. Have exchanges. Really manifest the vision of Kwame Nkrumah, of Sajifo, of Patrice Lumumba, of Thomas Sankara, and indeed, yes, Yomo Kenyatta and His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie. My wife and I have one son. He was born in 1999, six years after we'd met Prince Selassie, Prince Ermia Selassie, Haile Selassie. And so we named him after the hero of the Battle of Adwa, Ras Makonen. Makonen Christian is heartbroken to hear the news from the nation that has given Africans at home and abroad so much pride. Ethiopia has been a beacon for Africans at home and abroad. In the war against Italian aggression in 1935, there were Friends of Abyssinia chapters in the Caribbean, in Europe, in Canada, in the United States. The Abyssinia Baptist Church in Harlem was the centerpiece of that movement. The Bron Condor, the early African-American aviator, John Robinson from Mississippi, opened an aviation school in Chicago and one was, was one of the first to rush to the aid of Ethiopia. He helped found the Ethiopian Air Force and he helped to start with Emperor Selassie, Ethiopian Airlines. Today, there are Dominicans and Jamaicans and other diaspora aviators working with Ethiopian Airlines, a great airline, an airline that is expanding all over the world. What will happen to Ethiopian Airlines if the great Ethiopian nation is destroyed? What will happen to all of Ethiopia's games? What will happen to all the work that has been done. Even during the time of the TPLF, we give some credit for the good things that they may have done in industry, for the good things they may have done in agriculture. This is not a time to be biased. This is a time for us to promote the idea and the philosophy of equality of opportunity, of rule of law, of rule by the ballot, not the bullet. This is not a time for vile scheming and tribalist wars and ethnic genocide and deprivation of means, we want an immediate ceasefire. We want the TPLF and its allies to return to base. We call for an immediate All-Africa Conference for the unity and the victory of Ethiopia, because the unity and victory of Ethiopia is unity and victory of Africa. My friends, it was a great 
Bob Marley, a, a sister nation of Jamaica, whose given Ethiopian name was Bahami Selassie, Light of the Trinity, who said, and I quote, What a beautiful thing it would be before God and man to see the unification of all Africans. So today, my friends, I call for the unification of all Africans at home and abroad to rush to the aid of Ethiopia. I call for the formation of an African legion in science and technology purposed on development so we can realize that great cause. Today, let it not be that we see the defeat of Ethiopia. Because if Ethiopia is defeated, it will just be one more failed state like Syria and Afghanistan and Libya and all the other failed states where people failed to understand their essential humanity. They failed to promote peace, love, and unity, and instead fell upon each other like wolves. Let it not be that we forget that we are each other's keeper. Let it not be that we forget the good book, be it the Bible or the Quran, which speaks to our brotherhood. Let us put down the sword. Let us work for reconciliation. And let us work for the rebirth of the Ethiopian nation as one 